Hey, Common Sensor, thank you so much for joining us today. I have the pleasure of introducing you to an incredible actor who I've known for a long time, who came to Hollywood kicking butt, and he's still doing his thing. Please help me welcome the incredible John Fargus. Hi, John. Hi, Lydia. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm so happy to have you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. See you later. First of all, where are you from? I was born in the Bronx. Uh, my father was in the Air Force. So we traveled all over the world, but the, the base, the home base was El Bronx. I have two sisters. Um, my other sister. One who's also an actress. Yes. Norma. Norma. Yes. When I was 13, we moved to Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I went to high school and two and a half years of college there. I was in the uh, drama department at the UP, at the University of Puerto Rico. And when did you start pursuing acting? I, I started when I was 14. In Puerto Rico? In Puerto Rico. Okay. But we were always doing things. Uh, I did a, my uncle would shoot home movies. He would have a script. And so we did all the monster movies. I played Dracula, I played Frankenstein. And we would shoot it in the neighborhood, in the Bronx. You know, we'd use all of the available buildings and stuff like that. Was this during the summer? Yeah, yeah, it uh -huh. was in the summer. And we, one of the things that, you know, my uncle, it was a special effects kind of thing, and it was dry ice. So that when you poured water into it, it would fall yes. over the place, you know. And I mean, I didn't care about the, the Frankenstein thing. I, it was the dry ice. <laughs> but that's... I mean, I started wanting to be an actor when I was young. So. Wow. So um, you went to college in Puerto Rico, but then you, you transferred to Carnegie Mellon? Uh, yes. I, um, a friend of mine was there, and he kept bugging me. And I go, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, finally, he said, listen, I'll pay the 25 bucks for your audition fee. And he was serious. And so I saw him at Christmas time. And he brought me all the paperwork. I signed it, and then I, all of a sudden, I, I was like, I'm, I'm doing this. So he says, well, so what's your monologue? And I went, well, I haven't really picked one. <laughs> and the, <laughs> he was like, oh, no, no, no. And on the, on the way to the school, uh, I had taken the bus, and I uh, took a cab with another guy, and he was talking about how he had been studying his monologue for six months. We went to the library and I started looking for monologues and I ended up doing a monologue from West Side Story and I went and I got in. Wow and how long did you have to memorize the um, monologue? What, what, what I did was I worked it that night, I studied it, then my friend Miguel, he got a grad directing student to block it out for me. That was the following, that was a Thursday to Friday and Saturday was the audition. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And then what made you want to come to Los Angeles? Um, it came down to one thing. When I realized, okay, I, you know, I'm going to graduate, you know, with a BFA and, you know, uh, in acting. And, uh, and I thought to myself, I'm going to starve. I'd rather starve in the warmth. Coming out here, did you have a uh, support group? Well, I mean, I had another uh, a friend of mine that went to school with me. But going to Carnegie, you, you have a, a, a networking uh, alumni thing that, you know, you reach out. And everybody, you know, they're, they're nice enough to, you know, say, come on and talk to me. And no one promises you anything. Right. And but you took advantage of that right away when you got out Absolutely. Here. Absolutely. And I, I didn't even have an agent because they wouldn't see me because I didn't have a SAG card. I had an after card because I'd done a commercial in Pittsburgh. And then I found out that back then, if you were a member of a sister union and, and had done... You could in. Yeah. And yes. if you had done a, uh, a principal role within the last year, you could buy into... You know, and I, I bought into SAG. Uh, so I had a second cousin who lived in Pasadena, and, and uh, he said, if there's anything that I can do to help you, you know, what is it? And I go, well, you know, I need to buy into SAG. And he said, how much? And I go, 
300. So, I mean, I know now it's astronomical oh, yeah. to get in. So I got my SAG card. Uh, I started looking at agents. No one wanted to sign me because uh, I had no credits. And uh, I got hip pocketed by a, an agent. Which said, means they don't sign you, but they will send you out. Yeah. The agents will so, send you yeah, out. So, yeah, basically mm -hmm. they, what they do is they're, you know, I was, I was their third choice in their stable. So they'd send out two other actors for the same role. If they didn't get it, they'd say, oh, well, then let's look at John Vargas, you know. So um, I went in, and I think it was, it was my first audition. It was for Quincy. I went in and I booked it and I thought, oh, this is the way it's going to be. This is nice, but it wasn't. <laughs> I, you know, I didn't, I didn't book another job for another. And four how or five soon after that did you uh, get the Neil Simon movie? The Neil Simon movie uh, didn't happen for about another year. In between, I had done a couple of episodics. I did a, an Incredible Hall in the actors' eighty strike. I had just read for. Only when I laugh, and I had gone to producers, and I was with the same agent, and they still hadn't signed me. So I met Neil Simon and a director, and I thought, okay, this is it. But I, not even a week later, the the actor strike started. So for the next three months, I never heard. And then when the strike was finally over, my agent called me up and said, hey, they want to see you again. It's between you and another guy. And so I went in. I I read with Neil again. And and then the casting director, when it was done, called me aside and said, listen, Glenn Jordan, who was the director, and Neil Simon would like to invite you to a read-through. I, I didn't know what that meant. You know, invitation, okay, this doesn't really say you got the job. <laughs> so I had to find a way to see if I had the job. And I said, yes, I, I'd love to, because it was right away. I said, can I put my name on the script? And she goes, yeah, it's yours. So it, that's when I knew that I had the role. That's awesome. Did you have a, a an idea when you were leaving school to come to Los Angeles of what type of acting you were going to do or what type of actor you were going to be? When I was at Carnegie, I, I, I did musicals because I was, I was a dancer. I leaned towards drama. I leaned towards uh, the classics. I mean, I didn't want to be like an action star of any kind. I wanted to be a... I wanted to be an actor. You know, it was one of those things that I didn't, I didn't realize. I, mean, I had done comedy at school, with then, you know, uh, Commedia de, dell'arte and that kind of stuff. It was the Neil Simon film, the, the one scene that I had, that booked me a series regular on a comedy. So, I, you know, when I first went in, um, you know, I was learning all of this stuff was coming because in a year and a half, that's moving fast. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look back at it, you go, wait a minute. And I had no one to say, okay, this is how it's done, kid. I had left that agent, and I met this one agent, and she took me in. She says, we're going to do this. And when she called me up with the pilot script, she, uh, I went and picked it up, and I went back and I read it. I, I, I was insulted because it had, I had one line in the entire script, and the line was C. Oh, and, <laughs> and I, I think I came. I, I drove back to my agents and I put the I kind of tossed the script and I said, "I'm not doing this." Was just, she calmed me down and she goes, "Okay, what color are those pages?" And I go, "They're white." She goes, "Right." She goes, "Those pages will turn many, many colors. Take the meeting." I came in and I sat there and I said, okay, see. And they go, no, 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 we don't want you to read. <laughs> we loved your work and only when I laugh and we'd like to offer you the role. And it was like, I mean, I didn't go to network. I didn't know what going to network was for another four or five years. You know, I booked this series with Jimmy Walker. The crew, I've always been close to all my crews, every crew that I've worked with. Why? When I was at Carnegie, you learn to do everything. So the first two years of this acting school, you're not you're not on the main stage at all. You're doing the crew work. So you're tech. You're just you're tech. doing tech, mm -hmm. right? I had a lot of friends that were techies, you know, and they were kind of like the geeks. But I got along with them, and because I showed that kind of, they would help me out and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And then 
on the on the set of this series, you know, it was the cameraman would come over on a break and he'd say, John, if you just move right there, you'll be in frame. And so you learn camera technique. You start learning to defend yourself, you know. I, I, years later, I worked on a, a, on General Hospital. That was another, you know, that was like doing live theater every single day because you, you do an entire script in one day. And you get 35 pages of dialogue that you have to memorize for the next day. So it was like opening night every every day. And so how did you memorize that? Did you have somebody work with you every day? I had a a girlfriend that was on the soaps. She had she was a soap diva. And when I met her I didn't know I didn't know who she was. I was nighttime. Um, <laughs> so she was the one that t that really said to me, you know, your brain is a muscle. And if you work it out, it's going to get stronger. And that's exactly what it is. You know, the more you read, the more you work it. When I was doing General Hospital, I was lucky enough to book a pilot that went to series uh, for Fox called DEA. The General Hospital uh, people had said, if he books it, then okay, we'll work around him. And so I was working two shows simultaneously. And, and that's a young man's sport. I don't know if I could do that today. Mm -hmm. But it was uh, get up be on uh, at ABC 5 a.m., makeup, block and tape. And then they'd shoo me out of there and I'd jump in my car and drive to whatever location. And then I'd be on the set, you know, and then that would, everything would slow down. So I could memorize, I could work on my lines there and I'd work until 11, 12 o'clock at night, head home, study the, the script for the next day and do it all over again. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. That's all I have for you today. Check out the next video coming up.